This is how people do it now, Nikki. They have their interviews oh, on the internet. I like it. I know, child. Okay, here they are. We're gonna ask you a few questions that some of our candidates find a little bit odd. Let's get No weird. judgment, shoot. Tell us about yourself. Who are you? My name is Nicole Pusadulu. I am a mixed media photographic artist and filmmaker, born and raised in southern Sydney, New South Wales. What are you doing? What are you doing? No, what are you doing? I'm currently in my third and final year of studying at the University of Technology, Sydney, completing a Bachelor of Design in Photography and Situated Media. I use a range of image-based mediums, so I shoot both digital and analog photography and film. I also collect found photographs and footage as a lot of my work is really heavily influenced by popular culture and Hollywood cinema, where I'll use cut, remix, mashup to reinvent and recontextualize them from their original state. Right now, I feel like I'm doomed to wander the planet alone forever. When it comes to photographs, I prefer manipulating them in their physical form rather than through post-production software such as Photoshop or Lightroom. Because I feel that there's more of a limitation when you're working with them as objects rather than pixels on a screen. So it limits the potential for how you can actually manipulate them. I guess rather than taking this as a complication, I like to think of it as a challenge to push through those boundaries and discover new and inventive ways of reshaping and representing images. Woven identity takes a look at the way individuals are commonly perceived in the public eye. At the time, I was getting my passport photo updated and it kind of made me think about how this two-dimensional image is supposed to capture your entire identity. I felt that weaving was a technique that would help me reflect this multi-dimensional nature since we're comprised of so many more facets than, you know, just the surface layer. Please excuse the crudity of this model. I didn't have time to build it to scale or to paint it. There was a lot of space to experiment with this technique and as I applied it to different size prints or different content, I noticed that it generally created an extremely different outcome. You wouldn't do that again. You wouldn't do that. Would you do that? I guess my passion and interest for all of this definitely got passed down from my parents. Mum's always been the creative one of the family. When she was young, she'd cut up magazines and create these amazing mood boards and pretty much design entire ranges of clothing just for the fun of it. And similar to mum, the beginning of a project for me starts with drawing inspiration from others. And whether it's from people close to me, or other artists, films, photographs, books, lyrics, I'm just sort of searching for that sense that there is this drive to tell a story or connect people in their work. I don't know what you're talking about. Really? Nope. <laughs> okay. Let me break it down for you. I think I have a natural tendency to just create based on how I visualise in my head. And so the conceptual side only really reveals itself as I progress through a project. <laughs> my personality is definitely reflected in my work. I spent my entire life growing up with a wannabe comedian with a video camera stuck to his hand. And as the years passed, I feel that role has definitely been passed down to me. Do you consider yourself humorous? I do a great impression of a hot dog. I feel like using aspects of comedy can act as sort of like an icebreaker between me and my audience. It allows people to open up and be vulnerable when witnessing my work before they delve into the deeper meaning. Is there anything you need? You need any food, you need any water. Can you bring me my chapstick? I'm currently working on a couple of projects. One specifically involves Hollywood feature films, where I've been sourcing and collating hundreds and hundreds of scenes from the late 30s through to the early thousands, where my central focus has been placed on how families are depicted in the film. There's something that begins to form after a while when that silence and the body language and the facial expressions between characters begin to say more than words ever really could. Don't know how to begin. When starting a project like this, the process of compiling content and materials is my first step. It allows me to figure out what I want to say, which is not as apparent without seeing an abundance of sources in the first place. I said, do we have a pellet? Huh? 
I think you can try to anticipate problems as much as possible, but there is always definitely going to be some sort of a complication that can arise when you're working with creative projects. Uh, this is Houston. Uh, say again, please. Houston, we have a problem. I try taking them on board as challenges and not being afraid to let that so-called problem push my project and concept even further than I could have initially imagined. I do have a commercial side to my practice, which helps me sustain what I enjoy doing most, which is the artwork. I've definitely been able to incorporate many of the skills that I've developed and the knowledge that I've acquired through my creative process into the commercial side of things. This being said, my central workspace would definitely be at home in our mini jewellery studio. I produce and shoot the majority of content there as I'm surrounded with images of inspiration, creativity, as I like surrounding myself with those things that keep me motivated. What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's... do you want? At the end of the day, all the money in the world would definitely not replace that feeling of making something from nothing and thinking, wow, this looks damn good.